Hey guys, so let's go ahead and keep on going with these limits at infinity here. So now we're going to talk about limits at infinity with other functions. Uh, and that means that uh, we're going to talk about functions that aren't rational functions, they're not rational-ish functions, uh, they're just completely different. So um, I think it's pretty interesting with functions like this here, uh, where you just have subtraction like this, um, and square roots and addition and so on. So example 9, limit as x goes to positive infinity of root x plus 1 minus root x. So remember we talked about um, if you're taking a limit at positive or negative infinity, there's really no concept of direct substitution, but you could just imagine what happens as x gets really super huge. So as x goes off to positive infinity, where does x plus 1 go? It also goes to positive infinity. Where does the square root of that go? Uh, that also goes to positive infinity. All right. So pretty much this first term here is going off to positive infinity. What about this term? Well, as x goes to infinity, so does the square root of x. So pretty much what's happening is uh, this thing is behaving like positive infinity minus infinity. Um, but that's actually bad because this is undefined. Okay, infinity is not a real number, so you can't treat it like one. So infinity minus infinity is not necessarily zero. Uh, it could actually be anything at all. It could be uh, any real number. It could actually still be infinity even. Um, so this is undefined, so it makes us sad face. Um, but there is something that... Yeah, that looks more sad now. Uh, there is something else that we could do, though. Um, let's go ahead and see what it is. So we're actually going to have to end up doing another algebraic manipulation, like we did in a few videos ago. Um, but let's see what happens. So how do we know what to do? Well, looking at this here, um, if you see something with square roots and you're not sure where to go, and you know you have to do some kind of algebraic manipulation, uh, just think about conjugates. So um, it's probably not officially a conjugate here, but what we could think about is multiplying, well first of all, let's write it like this, over 1, and then we'll multiply the top and the bottom by the uh, conjugate of the top here. So we're going to multiply it by root x plus 1, and then plus root x, alright, um, on the top and the bottom here. Okay. Uh, and we'll put square brackets around this whole thing here, even though we don't really need it, but it's good to have. So we've got this here now. So um, we're going to foil on the top, and then on the bottom, well, nothing's really happening on the bottom, we're just multiplying by 1. So this limit equals, equals what? Uh, equals the limit as x goes to positive infinity of what happens on the top when we foil. Uh, root x plus 1 times root x plus 1 that just gives us plain old x plus 1. All right, uh, And then outer is root x plus 1 times root x. Inner is minus root x times root x plus 1. So it's uh, outer and inner are the same thing. So um, they're going to cancel, right? Root x plus 1, root x, and then minus root x, root x plus 1. So those are going to cancel, which is good, because when we do this kind of algebraic manipulation with the uh, conjugate here, that's the idea, is we want outer and inner to cancel, right? So uh, last gives us minus root x times positive root x, which is just minus x. So that's what we have on top. What about on bottom? Uh, just this still. So root x plus 1 plus root x. All right, um, so now what? Now when we simplify, um, on the top we have x plus 1 minus x. So the x and the minus x are going to cancel. So let's go ahead and just erase those here, uh, just to save time and space, I guess. Um, and then plus 1 is just uh, 1, so we can get rid of the plus sign also. So now what we have is this, and now we can think about what's going to happen as x uh, shoots off to positive infinity. So remember, we know that uh, as x goes to infinity, so does square root of x plus 1. And as x goes to infinity, so does the square root of x. So this goes to positive infinity, this goes to positive infinity. If you add them together, the result goes to positive infinity. So what we have here is 1 divided by something going off to positive infinity. And remember, 1 divided by super huge numbers equals uh, or approaches 0 as these numbers get more and more huge. So this limit basically uh, equals 0. Again, because what we have is 1, a fixed number, divided by something that's just growing and growing and growing, going off to positive infinity. So this limit has to equal 0 then. Um, now you might be thinking, now hold on, didn't you say that this isn't 0? Well, what I said was uh, infinity minus infinity is not necessarily 0. 
uh, it might be zero, it might be a different number, it might also be infinity still, it might even be negative infinity, uh, it could be anything, we just have no idea. So if you end up with infinity minus infinity, you got to be really careful about what you're doing next, because um, it could be kind of tricky. So, but uh, if we have something like this, it won't always be zero, so let's see an example where it's uh, turned out to be something else. Maybe, maybe it will. Uh, so let's go ahead uh, and go to example 10. I just don't want to spoil the surprise here. So example 10. Um, kind of similar, but slightly more complicated. We're going to take uh, the limits as x goes to positive infinity of um, the square root of x squared minus 4x plus 7, square root over that whole thing, uh, and then minus x. And then parentheses around all that we need. Okay, so we're going to uh, do this here. So again, if we think about sending x off to positive infinity, um, x squared minus 4x plus 7, uh, the dominating term here, so to speak, is x squared. Okay, because x squared, that's a higher power of x than minus 4x. Um, so as x gets really, really super huge, the only piece that really matters is the x squared. So um, x squared minus 4x plus 7, this whole thing is going to shoot off to positive infinity here. Take a square root of it, it's still going to go off to positive infinity. Um, and x, we know, is going to positive infinity. So really, this is kind of behaving like something that is uh, plus infinity minus infinity. All right. But again, that's uh, undefined, so sad face. Um, so we have to try an algebraic manipulation here. Um, and we're actually just going to do the same kind of algebraic manipulation that we just did. So let's go ahead and do that. So first step is to write this over 1. Okay. And now we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the uh, conjugate of the top. So here, that's going to be root uh, x squared minus 4x plus 7, um, and then plus x now. Uh, and then the same thing on the bottom. All right. Um, and then let's go ahead and put brackets around this whole thing, even though we don't really need these. But why not? <clears throat> okay. So now we're going to uh, simplify this mess here. So this equals the limit as x goes to positive infinity of what's happening on top. What we're going to FOIL, so when we FOIL we have a first, the square root of x squared minus 4x plus 7 times the same thing. So first just gives us x squared minus 4x plus 7. And then what happens with the uh, outer? Outer is plus x root 4x, or sorry, uh, plus x root x squared minus 4x plus 7. And then inner is minus the same thing, okay? Minus x root x squared minus 4x plus 7. So outer and inner cancel, which remember is what should happen, okay? If that doesn't happen, something went wrong somewhere. So that's what should happen uh, when we try this kind of trick here. And then uh, last is minus x times plus x, or in other words, minus x squared. Okay? So that's what's happening on top. What's happening on the bottom, uh, just, we just have this guy floating around here still. So we have root um, x squared minus 4x plus 7. And then outside of the square root, we have plus x. Okay? So this is our new uh, limit here. So let's see what's happening now. Um, on the top, we have x squared minus 4x plus 7 minus x squared. So this x squared and this minus x squared are going to cancel. Uh, if you cancel like this, be careful, this minus sign has to stay here because it's on the, it's on the 4x here, so it's minus 4x plus 7. Um, okay, so now we're down to this here. Uh, so now what we want to do, it's a little more complicated than example 9, and actually we're going to use a technique that's sort of similar to uh, example 8. Um, it's actually pretty much from here, it's pretty much going to be just like example 8, but uh, a little more complicated because we have this plus x out here. But the idea is still the same. Uh, we want to look at the highest power of x that appears on the top, highest power of x that appears on the bottom, and see what to do from there. So, highest power of x on the top is just x to the first, right? So we have negative 4x plus 7. So the highest power of x that appears is x to the first. That's good. Um, 
on the bottom, what do we have? We have square root of all this stuff plus x. So remember, when x gets really super huge, this guy over here is kind of behaving like what? Well, let's see. Um, when x, we're, we're going to write that down here just to make a point. Uh, when x gets really super uh, huge, square root of x squared minus 4x plus 7 uh, behaves like behaves like the square root of x squared. Okay, and the reason is that um, in x squared minus 4x plus 7, uh, when x is really, really super huge, the x squared, that's the dominating term, so that's all that really contributes to anything that matters. Um, x squared is the most important part here. So when x is really super huge, uh, you know, think about it. If, you, if x is like 100 trillion, then you have 100 trillion squared minus 400 trillion plus 7. Um, that's not a whole lot different from just 100 trillion squared. Okay, uh, so when x is really super huge, the only part that really matters is this x squared. So that's why this whole thing kind of behaves like the square root of x squared. But remember, the square root of x squared is just equal to x. Technically speaking, it's the absolute value of x, but um, x is going off to positive infinity, so we could just assume that x is positive anyway. So we don't have to worry about absolute values here. So we could just say x. And that's good here. All right, so when x is really super huge, this whole thing here just kind of behaves like x, and that's good. Um, so what we pretty much have is negative 4x plus 7 over something behaving like x plus another x. So really, the highest power of x that appears on the bottom is just x to the first, okay? Because this whole square root behaves like x to the first, and this is x to the first. So highest power of x on top is x to the first, highest power of x on the bottom is x to the first. So that's good um, that they're the same. So now what we can do is uh, multiply the top here and the bottom by 1 over x. All right, so we're going to distribute that through to everything. Um, so let's go ahead and do this, and we want to be careful about that. So now what we're going to have is uh, equals limit as x goes to positive infinity of what? On the top we have minus 4x over x, and then plus uh, 7 over x. And then what's happening on the bottom, we have a 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 4x plus 7, and then plus uh, x over x. All right, so we're taking a limit as x goes to positive infinity of this whole thing here. So um, we're kind of running out of room here, but let's, uh, well, we have some room over here, I guess, so let's go ahead and use it. So this is going to equal what? This is going to equal the limit as x goes to positive infinity. Um, before we move over here, remember that trick we had um, in example 8? Uh, 1 over x, that's the same thing as the square root of 1 over x squared, right? And remember, square root of this times square root of that, you can push uh, this into that and it'll all be under one square root. So if you're not sure about that, um, go ahead and check the video, uh, the previous video where we did example 8, and you'll see what I'm talking about there. Um, so 1 over x is the same thing as square root of 1 over x squared. So square root of something times square root of something else. You can push them together under one square root. So this is actually going to be, um, let's simplify a little bit also. Minus 4x over x is minus 4. Plus 7 over x uh, can't be simplified. And then what happens here is we have um, x squared over x squared. x squared over x squared kind of cramped in here, uh, minus 4x over x squared plus 7 over x squared. Uh, and then plus x over x is just plus 1. So sorry about all the cramping in here. Um, let's go ahead and mosey on back up to the top where we have more room. So if we do that, uh, continuing all this stuff here, let's go ahead and rewrite what we just wrote a little bigger now. Um, this is going to equal limit 
as x goes to positive infinity of negative 4 plus 7 over x over the square root of x squared over x squared uh, minus 4x over x squared plus 7 over x squared uh, plus 1. All right, so this is what we wrote in the bottom corner here. It's a little bit bigger now, easier to read. So when we simplify this now, uh, what's going to happen? We're going to have equals limit as x goes to positive infinity of negative 4 plus 7 over x divided by, let's uh, get rid of this here, divided by uh, root 1, okay, x squared over x squared is 1, minus 4 over x plus 7 over x squared, and then plus 1. All right, so now we're ready to um, think about what happens as we send off as we send x off to infinity. So when we do that, uh, let's see. If x goes to infinity, where does negative 4 go? Uh, it just stays negative 4. As x goes to infinity, where does 7 over x go? Well, x gets really super huge, so we have 7 divided by really super huge numbers, which means this is going to 0. All right, 1 just stays 1, um, minus 4 over x, as x gets really super huge, minus 4 over x becomes really super tiny, close to 0. And same thing here, 7 over x squared, uh, as x gets really super huge, x squared also gets really super huge, and then 7 over x squared uh, goes to 0 here. Yeah, this is all inside the square root, but that doesn't actually matter, so remember, um, we can push limits inside the square roots like that. Uh, that was one of the properties we had a while back. Um, and there were some subtle details with that, but we don't have to worry about that with this because we know we can just assume that x is always positive. Um, Alrighty, so uh, then what? Then 1 just stays 1. So really, this equals, and now we can drop the limit symbol because we're evaluating. So this equals negative 4 plus 0 divided by square root of 1 uh, minus 0 plus 0, right? and then plus 1 outside of that. Oops, so uh, that's what we have here. So really this is minus 4 over root 1 plus 1, which is just 2. So this whole thing then is negative 2. And that's our answer for this limit here. So for example, 10, the answer is negative 2, which you probably wouldn't have guessed uh, just by looking at the uh, original problem. You might have guessed it would have been 0 again. But no, that's why you've got to be careful with uh, infinity minus infinity. It could be zero, it could be something else, it could be anything, really. So um, if you have something like we had with example 10 and example 9, uh, try that algebraic manipulation trick where you write it over 1 and then multiply by a conjugate.